I swear no books have been harmed in the making of this video. Yeah, sure. <laughs> here and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be ranking the Chronicles of Narnia series. So I got this box set of all the Narnia books a couple Christmases ago, and I'll leave a link to my unboxing of this box set in the top right corner of the screen. But I read it once when I first got it, but I really just sort of skimmed through everything, and that led to me not retaining any of the information, which is really sad considering I call myself a reader. Um, but anywho, I picked up the series again a couple weeks ago, and I took a few mental notes and realized that I absolutely love this series. But anywho, let's get into this ranking. It was at this moment that he knew he was dumb. One just flew across my room. Oh my goodness. I swear no books have been harmed in the making of this video. Yeah, sure. Okay, so for me, coming in at last place, we have The Last Battle. Did I like this book? Of course yes! So why is it at the bottom? And no, I am not about to bore you with my 5th grade speech. Okay, so I thought this book was pretty good on its own, but considering that it's the last book within the Chronicles of Narnia series, I found it to be a little strange, a little bizarre, really just kind of disappointing. I really like the idea of there being an Aslan imposter, despite the fact that I was pretty creeped out by the ape called Shift. Anywho, I also really liked the battle within this book, it was pretty fun to read about. And I also liked how metaphorical the ending was to the Christian Bible. I, but overall, I just found it to be kind of disappointing, um, considering how much I liked all the other books. So yeah, in last place, we have The Last Battle. Coming in at sixth place, we have The Silver Chair. Now I thought this was a pretty solid book. I really liked the darker, colder kind of vibes this book gave off. And they were still kind of whimsical vibes too, but they were a little darker. I love following Jill and Eustace in this book, despite the fact that they weren't like, you know, the main, I don't know, squad, I guess. I also really liked the character of Puddle Glum. I thought he was pretty interesting and entertaining, and he actually gave off one of my favorite pieces of dialogue within the entire series. It had to do with, I think it was the evil witch they came across. She kept telling them how Narnia was just make-believe and it doesn't even exist and they were sort of starting to give into that but then Puddle Glum was like, you know what, I may as well believe in this make-believe. It was something like that, but yeah. In 6th place we have The Silver Chair. In 5th place we have the 3rd book, The Horse and His Boy. Chronologically it's the 3rd book. Um, I read it in chronological order because that's the way the box set is. I find this book to be a little underrated. Uh, but overall, I really like the characters, especially Bree the talking horse. He was really interesting. I love following Shasta as he sort of was discovering who he was. I was there with him discovering who he was as well. So I thought that was really interesting. I also liked how this book take, took place outside of like the main portion of Narnia. So we learned a little more about the few other places within this magical world. And I honestly, I think this book has some of the best transitions and the best pacing within the entire series. It really was just a great, great book. And coming in at fourth place, we have Prince Caspian. Now, I loved meeting the Pavensies back again in this book. Um, and I also loved the fact that we were introduced to Prince Caspian. Now, his introduction was pretty much based off like uh, four or five, I'm not too sure, maybe even more or less, um, chapters of just backstory. So we learned a lot about Prince Caspian, but at the same time, it took up a lot of the book. Considering how short this book is to begin with, it sort of, the amount of backstory there was sort of made it slow the book down. But at the same time, that was like necessary backstory. We had to learn about this because we didn't really know what happened between um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and this book right here. So that was really, so really, it was really necessary. So really, it was really necessary. I just said really, really way too many times. Um, but anywho, yeah, it was just pretty necessary. There we go, a synonym. It was pretty necessary um, to know all of that backstory. In third place, we have a very fun book, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I thought this one was really nice. Um, we follow Prince Caspian, Edmund, Lucy, and their bratty kind of cousin, 
Eustace, which I'll get to in a second. I really liked how with all of the chapters in this book, we sort of learn a brand new thing. So like one chapter, we'll learn, we'll learn about this guy or this guy or this something or this something. It was really just an awesome book. I liked I liked the idea of them voyaging across the sea and in search of the seven lords, who I believe, um, I can't re exactly remember, but I believe they, they served Prince Caspian's uncle when he was king. Don't quote me on that, although I just read the series and I'm already forgetting everything. Anywho, I like the part at the end where they're exploring the end of the world, but probably my favorite part within this book was actually Eustace's character development. Like I said, he was started off as a pretty bratty, whiny kind of character, pretty annoying really. But then, um, and I won't give off too much, but he just went through a bunch of character development that literally made him into someone that you can instantly fall in love with. He was so amazing, and towards the end of the book I thought he was a great character. This dragon right here will give you a little bit of an indicator as to how Eustace became such a great character. Now in second place we have The Magician's Nephew. This one I thought was so different and that's sort of why I love it so much. Now I really liked following Diggory, Polly, and Diggory's uncle Andrew. I love sort of the different tr the different method of transportation in this one. This is probably one of my favorite transportations in Tenorinia, aside from the wardrobe, um, with the magic rings. So that was really cool. I loved how a good chunk of this book centers around England over just Narnia, which I thought was really nice. I really liked learning about the city of Charn because that was some that was like a new world that outside of Narnia and I guess our world. Um, but yeah, and I liked learning how Empress Jadis became came to be, and, and I loved reading the creation of Narnia and how it was founded. It was amazing. The highlight of this book, though, to me, was really just the ending. I thought it was very sweet, very adorable, but it also linked really, really well with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which was the second book to come after this one. So, if you hadn't guessed already, in my top spot, we have The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Honestly, this is just a classic, which is why I have it at the top spot. Now, sometimes I actually toss up between these two books. Sometimes I'll have this book as my favorite, other times I'll have this one. But at the moment, this is my favorite book. Now, some of the strengths I find in this book are very similar to the strengths that I found in The Magician's Nephew. The only difference was that I kind of liked the Pavensis. I liked following the Pavensis a little bit more. So, yeah, and I really just fell in love with this book. I loved how this story started, I loved how it ended, and I loved all of the great bits in between. Well, yeah, that's my ranking for all the Narnia books. I'm not gonna bother putting them back inside the box set because we saw how that ended up. <laughs> Um, but anywho, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment down below for future video idea suggestions, and I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye!